Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Wednesday Experience, our first Wednesday Experience of the 2024-2025 academic year. Yeah, it is good to be together. Yeah. I am going to let President Davis uh, really kick off the service here in just a moment, but before we get to that, I just wanted to give a couple of brief housekeeping pieces, recognizing that we are a lot of people in one space, um, and we're just getting started into the year. So on the check-in and check-out tables, you'll find a handout about spiritual formation requirements and what's required of you as a student here at Greenville University and how you can get those credits. Um, the other piece is just to make sure that you stop at that check-in and check-out table when you're coming in, scan that ID, and when the service is over, you'll scan that ID. You have to have both the check-in and check-out here at TWE to get that coveted TWE credit. Uh, one other note about checking out. I promise you, and you can trust this promise because the chaplain wouldn't lie, okay? I promise you, you will have enough time to check out and to get to whatever you might have at 1030. So please, 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 please stay seated until I formally dismiss you. Please don't leave your seat until you're formally dismissed. That way everyone can continue to worship together, continue to hear what's going on, and we can be respectful of one another as we worship here this morning. Okay, I'm going to pass it over to President Davis to kick us off. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is 2024 and we are still here at the Wednesday Experience worshiping together because we think that this is one of the most important things we do. We gather as an entire community, faculty, staff, all of your coaches, all of your friends are in one place. And so we value this time not just because we want to worship the Lord our God together and that is amazing, but he also gives us the fellowship of all believers right here in this room, just the energy that we get to enjoy being together. So that is why we think this is so important to the Greenville University community is because it is a community. We want you to feel seen and known and part of something bigger than yourselves because we believe you are uniquely gifted to serve each other in this community. And so that is why we are here today. And it's a little warm. I get that. And I apologize that we don't have air conditioning, maybe someday, but we like being here in the gym because there's just an amazing presence of God here in everything that we do, not just because of a stage and worship, but even as you come into this space and watch basketball and volleyball games, this is a sacred space. All of the places on our campus, we want to be a sacred space, a place where the spirit of God is tangible. It's almost so thin between heaven and earth. So thank you for being here every week, as much as it is possible for you to be here. We are glad that you're here. So let me start us off in prayer, and then we will have a good time. God, thank you for this student body. We know that you are going to move in this space and this time. We commit to you this time. We throw away all of the things that drag us down. We know that our best efforts are just filthy rags in, in terms of what you want to do. And so whether it's our speakers on this stage, the worship, pursuit teams, we just wanna be your vessels to see the goodness of God in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Greenville University. Is anybody out there excited to worship this morning? Can we stand in reverence as we offer our praise to God? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
dry Drink of the water Come and thirst no more Come all you sinners Come find his mercy Come to the table He will satisfy Taste of his goodness Find what you're looking for God, all of the praise this morning is he is worthy of our praise. In the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to i 
this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. Each new day is a gift from you, and Lord, we are so, so grateful. Lord, I thank you for each and every person in this room, that we have the opportunity to gather together in community to worship you and to learn more about who you are, Lord. I just, pr- I just thank you for the love you have for us, Lord, that we don't deserve it, but still you give it to us, Lord. I just pray over Kelly. Um, that you just speak through her, Lord, today, that we may um, receive what you have to share with us and that we leave this place different than the way that we entered. Lord, we praise you, we thank you. I pray all these things in your heavenly name. Amen. For those of you who I haven't had the chance to meet yet, uh, or we haven't connected since you've returned to campus, my name is Kelly Pennington, and I serve as the chaplain here on campus. And really, I'm going to give away, like, the whole semester, right now, what we're going to be talking about, thinking about again and again. And it's just this. You have a call. You have a call. You're going to be hearing that language of call and calling again and again all throughout the semester here at TWE. And I don't know about you, but the first thing that jumps into my mind when I start to think about call is this, right? I think about a phone call, but really that's not the way that call has been understood for the majority of the history of the world, right? Phones weren't invented till the middle of the 19th century, right? You might think back to like sixth grade social studies, Alexander Graham Bell, right? He got the patent on the telephone in like 1876. Uh, Americans didn't start having phones in their homes or like personal phones until the 1920s. And even then that was a pretty small number of people who had that. It wasn't until the 1950s in America when the majority of Americans would have started to have access to a phone in their homes. And then the game was changed again when we, when phones went portable, right? In the 90s with the, uh, when we got cell phones, could take them with us anywhere. And the idea of calling was changed yet again as early or as late as, I guess you could say, like 2010, when video calling on phones became a thing with the introduction of FaceTime, right? What might seem normal to you and I when we think about calling, right? This has only been around for like 30 years in the way that we might know it. So I think trying to understand what, the, what in the world are we talking about when we think about calling, right? Calling or a call in the most general sense might mean to make a request or I might say to make an invitation, right? You might be 
called upon to pray. You might be called upon in class to answer a question. Calling might be uh, to speak loudly in order to be heard. You might call to someone across the football field. Or if we're going to go really old school, to call could be to pay someone a visit, right? Uh, Mr. Darcy paid a visit to Elizabeth Bennett. And if that is too old school for you too, right, think about one of the Bridgertons paying a visit to someone, right? They're calling on someone. Okay, you're picking up what I'm putting down. Good, good, okay. These are more of the kind of calls that we're talking about this year, not this kind of call. And I'm sure right now many of you are thinking like, Phew, thank goodness, because who even makes phone calls these days when you can just call, or excuse me, text or email? Yep, I'm in that camp, right? But whether it be a phone call, whether it be one of these kinds of calls that I just talked about on the screen, calling is ultimately about connection, right? Calling is ultimately about connection. We all need to be heard, and not just in the sense of like some kind of auditory stimulation. Being heard isn't just something that we do with our ears, right? We want to be known. We want to feel understood, right? We want that sense of connection. That's what being heard is about. And you all probably know this because if you're like me and tend to just pick up your phone to text rather than call someone, there's probably been times when a text has been misunderstood because someone couldn't hear the tone of your voice or they couldn't see your facial expressions, right? Or maybe you've told someone, actually, you know what, I am just going to call you because this will be quicker. You know you'll be understood more quickly if they're actually able to hear you, right? Calling, whether it be any of these definitions, maybe even when we're talking about calling on the phone, is about connection. It's about feeling heard and seen. It's about feeling known and understood. And we're going to turn to scripture here in a moment, and I'm going to read a passage from the beginning of the Gospel of John, where the men who would eventually become Jesus' disciples see and hear him for the first time, and Jesus connects with them, sees and hears them for the first time too. So let's turn to scripture. The following day, John, John the Baptist that is, was again standing with two of his disciples, and Jesus walked by. And John looked at him and declared, look, there is the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following and said, what do you want? They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying, and they remained with him for the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of those men who heard what John had said and then followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Come and follow me. Now, I know I said that the calling we're talking about isn't really going to be about phone calls, but I do think there's an analogy here in the passage I just read. Two different kinds of phone calls that might help us understand a little bit more clearly what kind of call God has for us. The first call I want us to think about for a second is 
an outgoing call, right? John the Baptist calls out to Jesus saying, look, there is the Lamb of God. And John the Baptist's outgoing call gets the attention of two men who were standing nearby who were intrigued. And so they started to follow behind Jesus. And as is a normal response to, I think, when you're being followed, right? When Jesus notices that he's being followed, he turns around to them and says, what do you want? What do you want? Why are you following me? Right? Now, while I would probably sound a little creeped out or snippy, might say that kind of sharp, right? I don't think Jesus had that kind of like, what do you want kind of attitude to the disciples. What I hear him saying, and in fact how other uh, scripture translations might translate that phrase, is something more like, what are you looking for? What are you seeking? What is it that really matters to you in life? These are big life questions, right? They're questions that we all wrestle with. They're questions that are just as relevant today as they were 2,000 years ago when Jesus was walking around here on earth. Although the two men who were following Jesus didn't necessarily say anything while they were following him, I hear them placing an outgoing call. They're searching for meaning. They're searching for hope. They're searching for connection. Have you ever felt that? Have you ever asked any of these questions or had these questions asked of you? Have you ever felt that you are looking and looking and looking for answers constantly? that you're crying out, is there anything more to life than just this? That you're seeking purpose and joy and peace and life and just feel like you just keep searching and searching and searching. Or maybe I should say that you're making these calls, that you're calling out these questions and the phone keeps ringing and ringing and ringing. And you start to wonder, Is anyone going to answer me? Is anyone going to get picked up? Is anyone going to pick up these calls, these questions? What are you looking for? You, here, now, today, what are you seeking after? What is it that you really want in life? What is it that really matters in life? I know that you all ask these questions because I get to sit with you oftentimes in conversations like these. I see all of you seeking to live a life of purpose and meaning. I hear you when you say you want to make a difference in the world. So if you are calling out for justice, in the face of the tragedies and pain that you see in day-to-day life, if you are looking for connection in the face of overwhelming loneliness, if you desire peace in the midst of chaos, if you are searching for truth in a world where truth is being constantly debated, call out to God. Call out to God because Jesus embodies and defines justice and connection and peace and truth. You can find all of these things in Christ because Jesus is all in all. Anything good that you could possibly be looking for is found in Christ. So call out to him. And Jesus is not going to put your call on hold Jesus isn't going to leave you on red. Jesus will answer you when you call to him. I can't tell you, I can't promise you that he's going to give you the answer that you're hope for or that you're looking for. But I can tell you with confidence that he is the answer 
the person of Jesus is the answer to our big life questions. So call out to him. Okay, outgoing call. Second call, the incoming call. An incoming call where Jesus is calling out to you. In the scripture I read just a few moments ago, we see Jesus connecting with and calling two people in two different ways. In the first way, Jesus works through or speaks through another person. We're told that Andrew, who was one of the two people who had followed after Jesus, um, like, who was following Jesus, Jesus says, what do you want, right? One of those people was Andrew. And so Andrew goes to his brother Simon, who gets renamed Peter in this passage, and Andrew tells Simon Peter about his encounter with Jesus, right? Jesus connects with Simon Peter first, not directly, but through Andrew. And I think this is significant. I know in my own life, the way that I most often hear Jesus calling me or speaking to me is through other people. Sometimes it's the wisdom of faithful Christians that lived centuries ago that now I can only access uh, through their written works, right, that I can just read about in in books. So I think about St. Augustine, a fourth century leader of the early church who famously said, my heart is restless, Until I rest in you, God. Ooh, that's a nugget of truth that I have to be reminded of every day. Because I am restless. And I want to rest. And I know I can only ultimately find that true rest, that true peace in Christ. And so I'm grateful for the witness of St. Augustine. And how he still speaks Christ's words to people all over the world today. Even though he's been long dead, right? That's significant. Or um, I think about a really key turning moment for my own life that happened here on campus when I was a college student here at Greenville. Um, That was key for me being up here, being able to preach today, was when Pastor Judy asked if I would preach at St. Paul's for the first time. And honestly, had it been any other person, probably at any other time, I would have said no, not interested, right? But God spoke to me. God met me in a really unique way in Pastor Judy, right? A way that I think had it been any other pastor, had it been any of my other beloved professors, I'm not sure if I would have said yes to the call, to the invitation that was coming to me from God, right? Pastor Judy acted as that vessel so that I could hear God because I needed to hear God. And I might not have had it not come to me in that unique and special relationship. So I know I could talk for days about the many, many times when I've heard from God through another person, right? So I'll leave it at that. But I want you to think about the ways in which you may have heard from God through another person. Maybe it was a word of encouragement. Maybe it was a timely prayer. Maybe it was someone holding you accountable. I know I am so thankful for the people who have been Christ's presence to me and who I have heard from God through. And I think that I do think that God works this way in a lot of our lives, throughout the majority of our lives. But here's the thing. If God speaks to us through others, then we actually have to be in relationship with other people. And we actually have to listen to them, right? I want you to look around you right now, right? The good news about the necessity of needing to be in community to hear from God is we're already in community, right? That's one of the things that I think is really special about your time at college, particularly here at Greenville University, is that you have that built-in community of peers and professors and other employees who care about you and who they want to hear from God. They want you to hear from God and want to be committed to following Jesus together. 
There's a reason why when Jesus, after Jesus rose again and ascended into heaven, left us the gift of the church, that left us the gift and told us to be in community with other people. God knows we need each other. God knows we need to be in relationship with each other. God knows we need to connect with one another. God intends for us to do life together because it's a gift when we're able to encounter God in and through one another in relationship and in community. I want to return to our scripture again to talk about another way that we might hear that incoming call from God because there's another person that Jesus calls out to, right? Jesus calls out to Peter through Andrew, but that last verse of what I read today, right? Scripture says that Jesus went out and found Philip, and he called to Philip and said, come and follow me. Okay, Jesus personally went after Philip. Jesus personally comes after you. And I, I mean personally in two ways there, right? That both Jesus himself will come after you and that Jesus will come after you individually. There's that personal kind of encounter. Just as Jesus personally searched out and personally collect, connected with and personally invited Philip, Jesus will make and is making that same personal invitation to you. Maybe you will hear God's voice in an auditory way, or maybe you will hear God speaking to you through another person or in scripture or a million other ways because God could choose to meet you in any way because God is all-powerful and all-present, but regardless of the means, one thing is clear, that God cares for you, that God is calling you. And I mean call in every sense that we've talked about today, that God is offering you an invitation of hope and peace and salvation, that God wants you to hear him proclaiming that you are loved, that God wants to meet with you and connect with you. Whether it's an outgoing or incoming call, whether it's you calling out to God or God calling to you, Jesus is going to be on the end, on the other end of that call, and he is going to respond to you just as he responded to the calls we read in scripture this morning. Did you catch the response to the various calls that I've talked about here in scripture this morning? Jesus' response, regardless of what kind of call, is come and see. Come and see. That is the invitation for the semester. That's the request that I have for each of you for the semester. And really, it's, it's not from me. It's Jesus making the same call he has for forever, for the last 2,000 years. Come and see. So if all this Jesus stuff, if all of this Christian stuff is totally unfamiliar to you, if it feels a little odd, if it's all new, that's okay. Jesus says, come and see. Come and see what he's all about. That's what we're going to be talking about here in Twi for the next month. What is Jesus all about? And if you feel like you know who Jesus is, then come and see what it means to be his disciple, to believe in him, to remain with him, to follow him. That's what happens to the disciples today that we read about, right? We don't hear the end of the story. This is just the very beginning of the story, that when Jesus calls, these disciples choose to continue to follow after him, to remain with him, 
to learn what it means to follow him. And that's a lifelong journey for all of us. Whether you've known Jesus for just a couple weeks or whether you've known him for decades, all of us are invited to come and see more of who Jesus is and what it means to follow him. Come and see. That's all I ask. That's all that Christ is asking of you today. Because I believe that when you see who Christ is, when you hear what he is calling you and inviting you into, you will see that he can satisfy our every need and is asking us to be in a relationship with him that I promise will be the adventure of a lifetime. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you, your greatest desire is to connect with us, that you are calling out to us. And so, Lord, I ask that you will give us eyes to see and ears to hear how you are speaking to us, how you are calling out to us, whether that be in your holy word and your scriptures, whether it be in prayer, whether it be through a friendship that we make here on campus, or whether it be in your church, or maybe it's going to be in ways that even are beyond our own logic. Lord, we want to connect with you. We want to hear from you. As we start this new school year, Lord, I pray that all of us gathered here, everyone on this campus, will come and see who you truly are. I know that you have a call on each of our lives and are calling each of us in personal ways. So speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. We ask all this in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. days where I was standing where you guys are and I could feel something standing between me and God and it really hurts and maybe that's you today maybe you feel like that relationship is broken I just want you to know you're not alone I've been there David has been there King David a man after God's own heart in Psalm 51, he pours out his heart before God. He says, God, I know I messed up. He says, I'm broken, I'm sinful, and I feel, I feel this separation. I feel this void between us, and I can't stand it. In verse 16, he says, you will not delight in a sacrifice, or I would give it. He said, if that's what it takes, I'll give it, God. You will not be pleased with the burnt offering, he says. The sacrifices of God are broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, God, you will not despise. Guys, he doesn't even ask you to fix it first. He says, give me your heart, bring it to me, and I will fix it. That's all he asks for. So while we sing this last song, just ask if we could offer our hearts to him all together, broken or whole. Let's bring that to him.
That's the call. That's it. A willing heart. So as you leave from this place, go to Christ who is waiting for you and who wants to connect with you. Go in peace. We'll see you next week.